Hello, this is a very simple video tutorial that talks about object initialization in Java. In a very first simple case, we will have a class which extends an abstract class and this abstract class implements an interface. Each of them will have static init block, normal init block, constructor. And then we will look at in which order are these different blocks executed when we create instantiate the class. There is another tutorial that follows this one, which is a little bit more complex and builds on what we learn in this tutorial. For the purpose, we have a project, a Java project that has five different Java files. One is a main class, which is on the screen now. It simply prints out the string, creating concrete object, then it creates one, then when it's done, it prints out first concrete object done, then it creates another one, accesses a field, actually a static field of this object, and then it prints out second concrete object done. To print out, we have a very simple utility class that defines the print line static method so that we do not need to repeat system out print line all the times when we want to print out some message to the console. This is static imported into our programs, into our classes, and then we just can shorten and write print line in the code. The concrete class is very simple. It extends the abstract. There is a static block which prints out static block before concrete constructor. Then we have a non-static block which prints out block before concrete constructor. Then we have the constructor and the static block and the normal block afterwards. The abstract class is very similar. It implements the interface, but other than that, the structure is exactly the same what we created for the concrete class. The interface is a little bit different. The reason for that is that interfaces cannot have static blocks. If we try it, then the editor immediately tells us that it's not possible. If you look at the bottom left corner of the editor, you can see that it says not allowed in interface. And simply that's the fact. So let's be compliant with the Java syntax and let's delete this erroneous line. However, we have two static fields. In an interface, every field is static, final and public without any further modifiers because that's the default. And we have a field X and a field Y and both of them are defined with an anonymous class and each of them has a block inside, an initializer block, which just says dynamic blocks X or Y in interface field object initialization. That's what they print out. What are we expecting when we start this program? What will it print out? When the first object is created, then we expect that the static initializers are executed and then the dynamic initializers are executed. Let's see. So on the screen, we see now the printout from the main class creating concrete object. Then we can see that the abstract constructor is initialized first. And that is because we create a, an instance of a concrete class, but it cannot be done without first initializing the abstract class that it extends. Therefore, the static blocks of the abstract class are executed. The static blocks are executed in the same order as they are defined. When the abstract class 
is initialized, then the concrete class should also initialize. So the static blocks are executed exactly in the order as they are defined in the source file. When we have the classes initialized, then a new object is created and then the object initialization starts. This is when the initializer blocks and the constructors are executing. First, the initializer block before the abstract constructor is executed and then the block after the abstract constructor is executing. And only when all the dynamic initializer blocks, so non-static initializer blocks are executing, when they are finished, then the constructor starts to execute. And we see the same afterwards for the concrete class. And then we have the first object done. When we instantiate the second object and the second object initializes, then the static blocks are not executed anymore because we have already loaded the class. The interesting thing is that the dynamic block X in interface field object initialization is printed only when we try to access the field, the static field of the class, which is inherited through the abstract class from the interface. This is because the interface is only loaded at this very point in the code because Java is using a so-called lazy loading. Actually, some GVMs may decide to load that class earlier, but the Java language specification requires that the interface is loaded latest when one of the static fields are accessed. This is the end of this first tutorial. What have we learned from it? We learned something about how the objects are initialized, that first the class is initialized when it's loaded, afterwards when the class is initialized it's not initialized again for any new object instantiation and uh, the object is instantiated then the init blocks are executed first and only after that the constructor is invoked. If there is an inheritance hierarchy, then first the object initializers which are higher in the hierarchy are executed because the children which inherit functionality from the parents depend on that functionality. In the next tutorial, we will look at the code that I switched to right now. which instantiates an instance of the concrete class and stores it into a static field. And we will look at how in this case, the different initializer blocks are executing.